week, the question is acceptable accuracy for long range hunting, which of course we mean, I'm pretty sure precision, that is group size that we need. Um, so we're gonna use, we're gonna base this off the applied ballistics weapon employment zone, the WES calculator. So the WES calculator is a six degree of freedom calculator that you put in all aspects of your round. So the bullets BC or drag curve, muzzle velocity, um, density, altitude, or atmospherics, the environmentals, you set uh, wind and standard deviation. So basically, what is your average wind call, right? So, you know, I average X miles per hour within X miles per hour of the real wind. Uh, what is my temperature reading? You know, how precise that is, the pressure, humidity, what is the muzzle velocity standard deviation, how uh, close I am on the range, the heading and latitude, you know, angle, uh, or correction, the heading in degrees, and the latitude. So we're gonna do a couple of, of different versions here. So we'll start with, um, so we'll start with a Berger 175 grain Elite Hunter, muzzle velocity 2830, SD of eight feet per second. This was actually from a, a shooter. A 12 inch target, 600 yards. And a couple of things to keep in mind when we're doing this is this is not based off a three shot group. So all of these numbers are based off a 30 round. So in muzzle velocity variation, it's standard deviation for 30 rounds for muzzle velocity. For precision, it is a 30 round extreme spread group size. So that's the, the precision is really the only thing that's done on extreme spread. So the reason for that is three is a, almost a useless number. It doesn't give you any statistical probability on a random three or a random, you know, two random three shot groups or whatever, unless you're overlaying them. And when you get to 30, a 30 shot extreme spread is a 95% probability. So when we talk statistics and you're trying to talk about a hit rate and you want to compare the precision of one gun to the next in a hit rate, you need statistical probability to be high, right? A high confidence factor. So 30 shot extreme spread is what this is based on. So when you hear these numbers, when you hear things like a half MOA, that's not real. That is not a 30 shot extreme spread unless you're shooting a six BR, like a, a full on bench rest guns with wind flags at 100 meters. You're not doing that in the field. It's totally unrealistic. Um, so for this first one, it's a Berger 175 Elite Hunter, uh, 2830 feet per second muzzle velocity, SD of eight feet per second, 600 yards, 12 inch square. Um, we're gonna do basically a train shooter, which in broken mountainous terrain, so you know canyons and hills and rocks and etc., is gonna be about a four mile an hour wind caller. So if the wind is actually ten mile an hour, you know ninety five percent of the time he's gonna be, you know no less than six miles an hour he's gonna call it at, and no more than fourteen. So he's within four miles per hour ninety five percent of the time. That equates to somebody that is you know, you could say uh, a, a person that takes it serious and actually shoots in the mountains. Um, in in comparison, like a world-class best wind caller field shooter in broken mountainous terrain is like plus or minus two miles an hour. Four mile per hour is legit. Um, if you're not shooting in the mountains like a couple of times a month in novel conditions, so in, in an environment that you've never shot in before, and you're not shooting into the thousands of rounds, you're not calling it within four mile an hour. What we typically see is like plus to minus six to eight miles an hour from even people that take it serious. If they're on the East Coast and they're not shooting in the mountains, you're not calling wind. But four miles an hour wind caller is like a, a relatively decently trained person. So we do four mile per hour. We know the temp within one degree, the pressure into 0 0.05, uh, inch HG, humidity 5%, muzzle velocity standard deviation eight feet per second, the range within one meter, that's also not realistic. Yes, most range finders can range to within one meter, but the zero, i.e. the center of the reticle of the range finder, unless it's like a, uh, a Revic or a SIG that you can adjust, that's not where the, the laser's actually reflecting or hitting. So we see common, it's plus or minus anywhere from two to five meters. 
but we set it at one meter inclination one degree heading five degrees and latitude 0 0.001 in other words as good as you can get except for the mile per hour so 600 yards 12 inch square four, plus or minus four mile per hour 1.5 moa extreme spread for 30 rounds 1.5 moa for 30 rounds is very good shooting so a 12 inch target that has a hip hit percentage of 58.6 percent okay that's a first round hit probability so if you take this system takes all of these variables we feed into it and it does a six degree of freedom calculation randomly applying those variables to every single shot and then plots it where that would hit right so that's based off a thousand first shot you know novel condition probability a 58.6 percent probability with this combination Okay, that's 1.5 MOA. That is about, I won't say it is as, as good as you can expect, but that is legit. If you have a half MOA gun, if you quote unquote have a half MOA gun and you shoot a bunch of half MOA three shot groups, you, you probably have a 1.5 to 1.7 MOA gun if you shot 30 rounds or overlaid 30 groups onto the same target and didn't center the group. So you just shot them and overlaid them. You're probably looking at a 1.5 MOA gun. So that's a really good gun. A one MOA gun, which is you know basically a lifetime, as good as you're going to get in your life for 30 rounds, it only increases it to 61.4 percent first round pr probability. It's less than three percent difference from a one and a half MOA to one MOA. So the difference there is think one and a half MOA is like a good gun with good ammo, good as in like you know a European Tika generally or a custom rifle with custom ammo, etc. Everything's good. One MOA is it's unrealistic, honestly, for 30 rounds, but it's like a bench rest gun or a near bench rest PRS gun. Um, the amount of effort it takes to go from a 1.5 MOA to a 1 MOA 30 shot extreme spread is huge. Uh, most ammo is just not even capable of that, period. Most match ammo is not capable of that, period. But even if you were, it's only a two point whatever 2.4 percent 2.6 percent difference in hit probability you can't see that in the field it takes about five percent and hundreds to thousands of shots to see five percent in real life so when you use this on a functional level a five percent difference is kind of the cutoff ten percent you can see it within 100 150 shots you know with each gun three percent is nothing it's not even worth chasing it now the reason why is because we miss due to the largest source of error. So in any given shot in the field, we miss the, the highest probability or the highest reason for missing is the largest source of error. So in general, it comes down to we suck. We, we don't shoot correctly. Okay, the next one is a loss of zero. So that is the scope loses zero, the rifle system loses zero, which happens all the time. The third one is no zero. So you thought it was zeroed, but you didn't actually zero the thing or or at some point it wasn't zeroed correctly, i.e. Uh, that would be number four would be an incorrect zero. You use three shot group zeros or you used five shot group zeros or a couple or you threw rounds out that you didn't like. You didn't use large enough statistical size to see the center of that cone. Number five is the wind. Of everything we can control, the first four we can control. We can train until we don't suck anymore. We can use equipment that doesn't lose zero. We can get a no kidding zero and we can get a no kidding correct optimized zero. The one thing we can't control is the wind. The wind is fully environmental and full, or, or mostly environmental and fully on us to learn to shoot in it and you have to shoot in it. So when we look at wind, that's what's causing all of the issues. So when we look at this, you know, the difference in hit rates with this 175 burger, it's the reason your your precision from one MOA to 1.5 MOA didn't change that much is because we weren't missing due to group size, we're missing due to incorrect wind calls. So now if we take that same thing and we go, hey, we had a 58% and a 61% hit rate for 1.5 MOA and a one MOA. Let's say we reduce our wind call error to two miles an hour. So this is like world-class, really good wind callers are shooting in it all the time. 1.5 MOA is now 84% first round hit probability. One MOA is 89%. It's actually just under five, it's right at 5%. Again, that's where it starts to be maybe sort of real, 
but it's at the same time it's really not like there's not enough difference there in the the functional ability to go from one moa 30 shot extreme spread to or from 1.5 moa 30 30 shot extreme spread to one moa that's very hard and people that think it isn't go shoot a 30 round group put 30 rounds on a single piece of paper and count every round you're not going to like what you see so even still just getting our wind calling ability down from a four mile an hour to a two mile an hour that increased our hit rate you know almost 30 percent 25 percent that's legit that's big you know when you start looking at it that's starting to be what most people would consider ethical an 85 to 90 percent first round hit rate is pretty solid so that's what that one bullet um you know if we look at another version we're looking at uh so using a um a 6.5 6.5 diameter uh bullet with a 0.62 g1bc going 2800 feet per second ish so you know, it's a hot creed more normal uh 6 prc we're using a 15 inch or 14 inch target um our 100 percent hit rate on a 14 inch target with everything being perfect so wind is you know 0.5 mile per hour wind call so no wind um and we know the muzzle you know muzzle velocity standard deviation is 10 so 700 yards 14 inch target uh 0.5 moa extreme spread for 30 rounds that's our 100 percent hit that is not real that you're not going to get a field gun shooting the gun itself isn't going to shoot 30 rounds in a 0.5 moa and you certainly aren't going to do that from any field position whatsoever but if we take that 0.5 moa gun that has a 100 percent hit rate on a 14 inch target at 600 or 700 excuse me and zero win condition and we make it a one moa which is extremely hard to achieve it's a 99.3 percent first round hit rate that's a material you can't see that if we take that same gun and we make it a 1.5 moa precision which is about as good as you can actually hope for it's a 94.8 percent for a 90 almost a 95 percent hit rate so from half moa which is not realistic you're not going to get that for a 30 shot extreme spread to a 1.5 which is like a legit good built gun mechanically you're only at four percent five percent hit rate difference that you can't see that the precision difference between them is not the contributor to missing the contributor to missing is we suck the gun loses zero or it doesn't has a zero doesn't have a zero and we can't call the wind the first three four we can control that's on us the wind takes effort you have to go shoot in the wind all the time and when we go to shoot do shooting classes or just shoot or we hunt with all these people people think they can call wind they make shots and they are wildly off and they go oh it's a it's a no win situation and you're like no 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 there's wind they shoot they miss by a lot and you're like well the wind is actually tw you know 12 miles an hour across the canyon so if you're not shooting in the mountains in the wind all the time thousand a couple thousand rounds plus a year your wind calling ability is garbage so just keep that in mind so when it comes to to baseline conditions it's you know baseline precision a minute and a half if you're shooting multiple 10 round groups of 1.5 inches at 100 yards or lower you're not missing a big game animal at six seven eight hundred yards because of your precision that's not going to be why you miss why you're going to miss is because of your wind calling ability your rifle isn't zeroed or because you suck and you yank the crap out of the trigger you know if you take that same 6.5 with a 6.20 bc bullet and you go from 95 percent hit rate with 1.5 moa precision and zero wind and you just make it a two mile plus or minus two mile an hour wind caller so like really good in the mountains 0.5 moa 70 percent one moa 68 percent 1.5 moa 65 percent so you're again you're looking at five percent from completely and totally not realistic half moa 30 shot extreme spread to 65 percent so five percent difference to 1.5 moa which is about as good as you can truly get in the field even when you go above that 
even two MOA doesn't change that. You're, you're looking like a percent difference between two MOA and 1.5, maybe 2%, because we're not missing due to group size. We're missing due to the wind call. So there's no real definitive answer other than when we look at a hit rate in the WES, precision is not the thing that drives hit rates. People focus on that and they want to shoot these itty bitty groups and they do a ton of work at 100 yards to shoot, you know, well, I got my fine, I finally got my quarter inch three shot group. Well, it doesn't matter. Let's say the gun does shoot a quarter inch for 30 rounds. The hit rate difference between a quarter MOA 30 round group and a one MOA 30 round group is like a percent. It's nothing. It doesn't matter. The effect is caused by the fact that we don't do our job as shooters. We don't practice enough and we don't practice in the wind and our wind calling is terrible. So as a baseline for me purpose, you know, uh, personally, and I know for like Ryan Avery, when we shoot somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5, like if I shoot a 1.3, 1.4, if the 10 round groups are consistently at 1.3 ish, 1.2, that's fine. The, the gun's going to do what I want it to do. It'll shoot further than it will shoot and reliably hit the chest of a, of a deer and elk further than people should be shooting at them. So the baseline precision, once good enough, quote unquote, has been achieved. So say two 10 round groups back to back or a 20 round group of under 1.5 MOA, 1.5 ish. Stop worrying about the precision of the gun. Worry about the gun holding zero. You doing your job so you don't flinch and calling win. That's what makes the difference in long range. And I think that's it.